Hey everyone, Tihashi here with another battle tech, or should I say rogue tech, commentary. We're here sitting on the surface of Smithen, and we're about to take to the stars again. Well, sitting on the surface, orbiting Smithen, and we're going to have a go at some jobs. It looks like a little bit of the Torian Concordant has opened up to us. Though the last time I checked we didn't have any work there per se. doesn't really look like there's much going on anyway, so I think we can go where we please. Three Skull Planet, Three Skulls, Three Skulls, Ryan's Fate. Now, <clears throat> I've been to Ryan's Fate a lot. Just to talk about Ryan's Fate for a second. It says Desert World. It is not kidding. That that place is a death trap. Usually when we've got reasons to go to Ryan's Fate, we ignore them. Not too much going on. Bring them... Rich Terran world. Looks like we'll head to Mechter. Now it's got Mech in the name. How could it be wrong? <clears throat> in moderation, we'll be hunting for probably <clears throat> two and a half, three skull missions. <laughs> Two dozen complaints with the XO. Pieces, pieces are local rebel. <laughs> she did it over nothing. Okay. Reprimanding peace is probably not the right approach. I'm tempted to refuse to get involved, but... <clears throat> I don't necessarily think that that's good leadership. Tempted to order Behemoth to back down. That's what we'll do. Oh god now now Behemoth is rebellious. Hmm. This is probably true. Darius I take Darius for a very lazy fair kind of uh leader very hands off yeah uh, i'm not i'm not very proud of that decision one more word and i cancel your next paycheck that's yeah, that's not a terribly cool approach Interesting that uh, Peace had a point, though. Okay. A little bit of drama. We'll, we'll carry on. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
one thing that I'm considering is uh, we went through a campaign mission and didn't talk about a mech, and so I kind of owe it to you guys to get a mech covered. Uh, previously, I promised the the quick draw, which we can still do. We'll probably have an excuse to use it here. Let's go ahead and visit the store. Piece of Archer, Piece of Awesome. That's kind of it. half ton lighter it weighs nothing that machine gun it takes up no space to place it boy it's a miracle of engineering I'll buy it like how could you how could you ignore something like that even if it's like even if it's a paint sprayer that you can mount on your mech, if it weighs nothing, it's it's a miracle. It's a miracle. Okay, enough of that joke. Hello. Proxima, great name. Oh, I guess we can see why. She made rank though, not bad. Trial boss. That's funny. She's a Canopian. And she has OTS. But I definitely think we can bring Proxima on. Let's look at Batfish, because his name is amazing. Fafnir, also good. Okay. Probably fine on pilot or uh, yeah on pilots for now. Let's see if we did anything for contracts. We should have contracts, but you never know. Come on, Comstar. There we go. Whoa, uh, adios, adios mio. Okay. Let's ignore that stuff for now. There's a recovery mission. There's a battle. We'll definitely take this battle on. It's urban. We haven't really had an urban mission so far. Glitch is still getting patched up. probably as decent a time as any to put in Proxima, who is learning a similar trade. <clears throat> We're going to be... orienting our builds to close quarters combat. The Warhammer is going to be fine. The Thunderbolt's going to be fine. The only thing it's built for sniping uh, are Orion, and we might be better off taking something else. I think it's neutral heat. Interesting, ferrocrete. Combination of metal and stone. Sounds like concrete. Concrete, of course, has rebar in it to fortify it. I'm tempted to take Proxima, but I might take Medusa instead, because Medusa can manage his heat with sensor lock. Okay, rather than make you guys wait too much more, I think this is what we'll take. <clears throat> and we'll talk about the quick draw for a second. So the quick draw has only 
two or three primary models tops. And the H and the G, if I remember properly, are pretty much identical. Um, I know their loadout and hard points are the same. One, the G, I think is older, was built first. Um, uh, I think in MechWare 5, those are the only two models and they're identical. Um, they've got mostly laser and missile hard points, uh, which is fine, especially since it's a, a cavalry mech, it's fast. Uh, it typically mounts jump jets, and I say uh, lean into its virtues, right? Um, it's sometimes advantageous to take certain mechs in a completely different direction, and then for others, like catapults, like archers, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know, the archer you can take in... A completely different direction but but like a catapult right um it's definitely not on a not a bad idea to lean there into its into its lrms and just let it do catapult things it's the truth it's the truth for the for the quick draw but more the quick draw you basically want to oh these guys are out in the square they're kind of hanging out by the water too which should be good for us the only thing about fighting in the water is that there's no cover but our lance and the way that we build our lances in general is a lot of it is around ignoring cover i know we take bulwark a lot and that might seem counterintuitive to what i'm talking about but it is the truth because the idea is that we remain mobile, we, as much as possible, are sticking jump jets on everything and doing our best not to get pinned down. Oh, that's that's pretty far up there. Oh, I think because uh, Tihashi has that increased sprint now. He might be the only one in this group that does. Okay. Here we go. So what do we see? A Thunderbolt, another 60 tonner, could be anything. And by anything, I mean a quick draw or a dragon. So we're going to be cheeky. We're going to park our sniper down at the end of that street. And then probably just lay an ambush for anyone who wants to close on it. Okay. Here we go. So the quick draw. Um, those are supposed to be reinforcements. Yeah. We'll have to take these guys out before they show up. Quick draw can move at uh, 84 kph. 81? 84? Somewhere in there. Uh, but it moves fast, especially for 60 tonner. Uh, it mounts medium lasers, giving it a lot of sustain. Um, and um, at least in MechWarrior 5, I like to give it LRMs instead of SRMs. But you can do uh, you can do it either way, especially in MechWarrior 5, you can do it either way. Putting SRMs on a quick draw, absolutely terrifying. Like one SRM6, a couple SRM4s, something like that. Uh, when you're like staring down a light mech and, you know, they're like, you know, Ooga, ooga booga i'm i'm a light mech right um you can just you can just delete them by coring them out with srms so okay time to go to work we've got this thunderbolt sitting in the water with almost no evasion and no defense set up and probably gonna be doing that for the entire time so we're gonna punish them for that by using our Orion to shoot him in the belly. 
We're also going to let the uh, damage profile of the Orion kind of guide us to where we want to shoot on the mech. Looks like he hit opposite sides. It's also tempting to go for a knockdown here, but that's not what we're going to do. I'm going to just walk up here. Still kind of shooting opposite sides of the mech. Goldilocks zone. So let's take a look. Yeah, I see. Still not really a, a right answer about how to go about peeling this particular onion. So that's a rifleman. A uh, 60 tonner that I did not anticipate. But that's just fine. Because we're going to... We're going to get in there and punch it. That's that's what we're going to do. So in this one, uh, the quick draw can do support equipment, which is cool. Here we put machine guns on it. Um, and we're, you know, comfortably taking advantage of our jump jets, closing in, getting into the thick of it. And that's all pretty much how you want to use the quick draw um when i first i played this game first before mechware 5 it, it came out first as well but when i first did did this i was not a fan of the uh of the quick draw mostly i mean the biggest reason is that the quick draw is relatively frail especially for a heavy mech um, and it feels frail to use. Like when you use it, you're like, man, this, this thing is just begging to fall over. Um, but that's sort of back in the days when I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't really know how to use fast heavy mechs. Um, like, like this guy's, it's a big Jenner or a big locust. Um, and you use it like those mechs. And as long as you can use it like those uh, those mechs, you're gonna do you're gonna do all right with it. I think just to incite panic, we're gonna go for this uh, this uh, melee attack. I might wait one turn. Alpha striking the Orion. He had to advance to do it, which is what we want, though. The Rifleman does not need to advance too much. Let's see what he does. Pew, pew. That'll make sense to me. I think that's all pretty smart. Stinks that there's a headshot in there. How bad was it? Pretty bad, honestly. That was from the auto cannon, I think. Okay. I'm going to make a jump. Has a headshot in there. I'll probably go for a pilot kill on the Thunderbolt then.
What, what was that shooting? Did you guys see that? Uh, it's uh, Behemoth's new rebellious nature coming through. Do a little bit of heat management. Here comes the reinforcements. We're going to want to be protective of our rear armor. jumping in. Pretty much shifting back and forth between the uh, between the Thunderbolt. I'm gonna do a big laser hit here. Can might not be a bad time for a precision strike just to slow that uh, initiative down. There we go. No one shot at Medusa so far. nor behemoth really. Maybe she can pull off this kill. Big kick. That looks decent. Looks like we can do the kill shot. Overlap this just a little bit. There we go. There we go. Here's a thunderbolt. Going in for a melee attack. Worthwhile move, in my opinion. Manage their heat in the process. So that all makes sense. We're just going to reserve. Shadowhawk. <clears throat> that must be a trebuchet or something. That was a lot of LRMs. Oh, there are three mechs back here. So it must be a full lance that's coming in. I thought it was only two. Perhaps a naive, a naive hope. All right, we're gonna go ahead and jump down.
That's 75 tons. That's scary. This uh, this mission's gonna get real here. Kind of whether I like it or not, it seems. Pretty much taken up all of this fountain. Might be wiser to move it to the lake. Let's do this. slow it down, which we need to anyway. Pemeth only has been hit in the head so far, which again is a shame, but I'll give her a chance to take more hits. can't imagine that that pilot's doing too terribly well. Little hops, nothing impressive. Man, just barely missed that, that shot. Turn this into a heat saving attack. Hopefully this is the kill shot. I took the shot anyway in case it wasn't. Oh, there he goes. There's our Shadow Hawk. Scouting for this other lands. I'm gonna go ahead and close on these guys and move to the lake if it makes sense to do that. We at least want to give ourselves the option. No line of sight, apparently. Just wasn't a good shot for that mech. That must be the trebuchet. See what the 75 tonner is. Can't tell yet. A marauder. Pristine marauder is going to be a pretty big fight. Probably the best call to close in on this lance. So they're pretty, pretty long range lance. We only gain by running at him. That Marauder is... No, they moved a little bit. I was going to say it's standing still, but it's not. Urban fighting, though, doesn't matter if it's MechWare 5 or if it's this. It's brutal, brutal fighting. Go ahead 
going full into our advance. Pew. Coming into box. I'm a bit impressed by the way that these guys have been playing. They really are playing for realsies. We have the uh, the evasion. We might as well reserve. Okay, the one, to shoot at this Shadowhawk is the Orion. Don't quite have the damage potential, but it's okay. Here comes the Marauder. Boy, we pushed that evasion just as, as far as it would go. So we're going to jump. Not hitting the correct parts of the mech. But that's okay. We're gonna take. We're gonna take our big beautiful bots and we're gonna shove them down these guys' throats. There goes your Lance Command mod. It's boosting, or it was boosting their damage. Pretty good Alpha Strike. All right, we're gonna come in for this kill. There we go. That needed to happen. If it didn't happen, uh, we're going to start running into problems. But we maintain our momentum. Ooh, a point blank PPC. Impressive. All right. It's tempting just to keep uh, dunking on this Marauder, but we're actually going to jump over here and pressure this trebuchet. Okay. Probably just going to make the same shot that we did before, especially because the Marauder is doing pretty badly on its heat. 
and dump everything into the leg because it'll probably take the torso out too. Just like that. Actually, the leg is still up. How about that? The trebuchet is trying just as hard as he can. Not inclined to uh, judge too much either. at our salvage limit for the most part. Don't know what else to do with this marauder, but that's all right. For now, we're going to we're going to be given real close attention and consideration to this here trebuchet. hit from the front. It's a much bigger dice roll, but it's going to be worth it. There we go. Let's see what our Marauder is going to do. Run? That's weird. Hmm. Yeah, that was all strange decision making but they're probably they're probably trying to help each other as best as they can like this is this was probably this director lance in particular was probably uh an elite lance you look at their mechs and how they fight elite for them at least the end of you. It's the end of that, folks. So that's that was kind of our quick draw showcase. Um, I use it in a much more punchy fashion. It's not that punchy a mech. Um, especially relative, even relative to the rest of the lance that it's a part of. But it is fast. 
um, it can hit, you know, it can hit, and it looks like we already had a chunk of the Thunderbolt. So anyway, uh, pretty much the definition of an average mech is the quick draw. Average to poor, has heat problems sometimes. Uh, unless you do something like I'm doing, or put it in uh, put it in the hands of a pilot that heat management is their thing. Probably just gonna take the trebuchet to pay the bills. I, that's this would be my second chunk of Marauder. We fought once before, so it's kind of a shame to not be building on that Marauder. But that's how it is. I wanted to do the quick draw because we'll probably retire it soon. It's hard to push the... It's better in MechWarrior 5, to be fair to it, but in this game it's hard to push the uh, quick draw's potential any further than we are. <clears throat> I'll really save for the mystery. This is a funny joke. Why not? So here are some old Star League maps. So here's Outworld's Alliance. That's who we're waving the flag of, sort of. Hello. The Argo is only uh, one of two of its kind, so the fact that it's, um, there's more to it isn't a surprise, but it's a, it's a colony ship or a colonizer ship. It seems likely enough that, um, they would have that uh, uh, Admiral Kerensky might have wanted to use a ship like this for the Exodus. It would have served that purpose pretty well. So Mira's got a uh, interesting point about how crazy people go over uh, Lost Tech. So the outpost castles apparently were co constructed after the reunification war. So the reunification war hit the periphery the hardest. Uh, it's basically an offensive from the Terran hegemony, but but the inner sphere as a general, the SLDF, um, to push the rim. Uh, the frontier uh, factions into line and it's successful it actually works um, but it also is one of the things that really turns the uh, SLDF and the uh, mostly the SLDF inside out because instead of protecting their most valuable areas they're out in the uh, periphery fighting uh, basically a war of oppression and it really hurts their public image um, it devastates the Torian Concordant um, 
and the um, a, a couple other periphery states. Darius himself is from Artru. Yang has an interesting point, um, mostly because So, for instance, take your mercenary company from MechWarrior 5, Mercs. If you found a memory core with just your Leopard, what would you do with it? The best you could hope to do is sell it as a, as a mercenary group, right? That kind of, that kind of incredible life-changing tool means nothing to a mercenary group because they can't utilize it as a resource other than to make money. Um, but here, Yang thinking like a mercenary is saying what we want are SLDF battle mechs. We want Gauss rifles. We want pulse lasers. That's what we want. Um, so this is Lord Madeira's, um, assessment of the situation is that this could be a, a, a game changing piece on the board. The problem is the castle's in a fixed location. You would basically have to loot it and raid it, which is what we're going to try and do. But his, no matter what, his assessment isn't that good in my opinion, because um he's thinking that this that the uh, SLDF mechs could basically tip the balance in the war um it's not entirely wrong the the technology uh technological gap between modern mechs and SLDF mechs is um significant it it's going to be highlighted later when we get our hands on a full lance of SLDF mechs and just uh monster like three lances of Torians, but that's not the issue the issue is it's in Torian space or close enough right it's a fixed location so it's not something that you can capture and hold like this rebellion does not have the resources to do it so only thing is is the only thing you can do is go and loot it um, which takes like a uh, reconnaissance mission, occupation, drop ships, and then to leave. And all of that needs needs time that we basically don't have. We'll we'll see. That's that's my take on it, but we'll see. Oh, he also acts in Lady Orano's name in this case. Uh, and as her representative, like here, we can say send someone else, but that's, that's, that's a bad take. Um, he is our, he is our rep or the rep of our boss. We have to say yes for the most part. <laughs> so here's here's Lord Madeira stepping up and acting like a boss. He's usually very polite, um, and even even under the circumstances, um you know, he's polite. He stays polite. 
but he's he's going we're going to go do this um and that's that's that head along into an abattoir an abattoir is a uh uh slaughterhouse that's the word Kept trying to say butcher shop, but no, it's a slaughterhouse. So he's saying we need to up our up our capabilities. And you know. We're gonna play the mission and you'll see I I have very mixed feelings about how this whole thing plays out. So there's our argument. That's that's quite a look. Okay. So we're going to do our housekeeping. We had more injuries, which is disappointing. Our medical bays are maxed, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, other trebuchet away. Don't exactly know why I'm hanging on to this griffin. I'll put it away as well. Okay, and we got another Thunderbolt, which is really cool news. So we're going to rebuild it really quick. Just kind of looking at what we have. Tempting to uh, build it to brawl, but we don't really need to. We could also build it to snipe. We're going to drop the MGs. be asking too much of it to push it to such a long range profile. We could do it the other way around.
Okay, so we got kind of a sort of like it says here, heavy skirmisher or brawler mech. We've definitely built the mech to uh, close with its only real long range weapon, the autocannon 2 fixed to the arm. So I'm probably going to have to finagle it for a second to get um, maybe our machine guns onto it. But we do have some systems for saving tonnage. We could drop the missiles altogether. If we did, we could do small lasers, which I prefer to machine guns. The only thing that's weird is taking the missiles off of the torso to put small lasers. Like, look at all the guns on this one arm and on this side of the mech in general. It's just, uh, just risky. Let me look at machine guns for a second. Just making this uh, tonnage make sense. Looks like we can get away with a heat sink. There we go. One hundred rounds. Okay. It's a lot of heat efficiency. But with the combination of jump jets, lasers, and this sort of close range profile. It's not a bad build. So we've got two full lances of mostly heavy mechs. We could send more people in to fight. We've just got a lot of injuries. especially because the missions get harder. Got this recovery mission. Wow, that's a lot of salvage. We're putting in both new pilots on this mission. That makes me nervous. Let's put the dragon in. Tempted to put in our missile bow instead, but it's not really a missile bow anymore, is it? Well, it is, just of a different sort. We'll take the catapult. Best to bring our heavy mechs for our new kids. <clears throat> this sort of recovery mission probably has a secondary objective and has if I had to guess, a lot of enemies associated with it. Okay. 
uh, loading screen hopes and dreams, uh, continuing to follow this uh, Activision Blizzard thing. And apparently uh, the U.S. Army has pulled out or um, is reduced or pulling out its support for uh, Call of Duty, which is an Activision property. And if you are familiar at all with the Call of Duty series, it is just steeped in uh, what is basically U.S. military propaganda, which isn't necessarily uh, the worst thing, but um, it depends on how you feel about propaganda, I guess. If you feel like it sucks to have people try and sell you a product, then it gets pretty insufferable pretty fast. Um, and if you feel like uh, they got to get their message out somehow, well... That's fair enough too, I guess. And as always, our hopes are that this this deal, this uh, sexual harassment lawsuit with Activision Blizzard really causes um, uh, at least heads to roll and at most people to go to jail for the horrible crimes they're committing on their on their fellow human beings. Oh, we're going for a memory core. Allegedly. So for some reason, there isn't a secondary objective like I thought. Now, I can be wrong about things, but uh, I don't like to admit it. All right, everyone else is in the 65 ton slot. This hill seems like it would be a good hill to post up on, but by the time, usually by the time you get to it, it's just chocked full of bad guys. So I think we're going to uh, break right instead. It's, is our sprint any better? Not really. These, these guys are babies and they can't really get their mechs to move. Let's get our dragon up there. If anything, we can start jumping backwards. Vehicles, 80 tonners, demolishers maybe? 80 ton vehicles are scary. Assault vehicles, gotta take them seriously. Um, but the fun thing about taking assault class vehicles seriously is it means you step on them like eggs and we build mechs that are good at that kind of thing. Let's see what they got, 55, 65, and 280s. Let's Send in the clones. Let's see what you got. Well, at the very least, we successfully wasted all of their movement, except for this guy here. So we're going to hop to this mech's flank and possibly shoot him in the bum a little bit. First things first, Shrek PPC carrier and a Demolisher LBX. That's even scarier because they can actually hit their shots. Oh, this is a Catapult C4. This barely has uh, defensive guns on it. It's just for dumping missiles on things. And then a Wolverine 6R for, for holding the line. So the fact that we're uh, sort of in their business like this should be of a major concern to them. Ow. This guy is pilot, very fancy. Got some real professionals in here. Can we get any further with a sprint? Barely. Just sprint up here. 
It's more than anything, we just want to be in this catapult's business. We really want to be up in this entire lance's business, because the only thing that they got to push us back are the Wolverine and the uh, Demolisher. And they're going to push us back with those, but it's not going to be enough. All right, peace. Nice shooting, sir. All right, someone's getting stepped on. Looks like it's going to be you. I think we'll reserve once more just to see what the catapult's going to do. Nothing. Yeah, the catapult is like, what can I do with this? You guys have to you have to fix it for me. Bam. Basically an awesome but better just got crushed. Uh, why do I say that? Vehicles don't have to manage their heat, uh, which is some real BS when they're in like later missions and there are a ton of them. So you get these PPC carriers that can shoot all the way across the map and they don't have to manage their heat. So... And if it makes you want to vomit. Uh, I don't think we're fighting any more than this lands, so it would be kind of funny to jump on this catapult. Uh, smart thing to do for right now is reserve, though, so we're going to do that. Ah, uh, shotguns. Ooh, it's big damage. You are walking yourself into the splash zone, my friend. What we'd like to do, maybe, is isolate this catapult and salvage it. Obviously, it's amusing to find this sort of uh, this sort of weaker lands that can't do much about us, but we do have tactical decisions we still have to be making for the good of our company. So we're gonna do something like this. Ooh, there's a headshot in there. That's great news. I might just go for a center torso shot there. And then peace. I'm coming, I'm coming. Instead, I think we'll shoot our AC2 at that. Catapult. That seems silly though. No, let's take out this Wolverine. Punched in the butt. Pew, 
few. Okay. Catapults making a play. All right. Actually, I'm going to have you just keep pushing your damage as much as you can. Just reserve for a turn. Ow. Bam. Who knew? The Warhammer functions so well as a Warhammer. Okay. Catalult. I'm afraid you're about to start having a bit of a time. Oh yeah, he does have a memory core and is conducting death from above. But uh, that's what we do here, right? Oh no. We're just gonna let him get back up because we're gentlemen like that and gentlewomen, of course. Catapult, use headbutt. Catapult.
like to do is hit him from the other side. This sounds, or it probably looks silly, but I promise you it's not silly. I mean, it's kind of silly. Uh, we're doing that to reduce their initiative and gain some uh, instability on our target. I don't know if I turn my lasers off. Whoopsies. No, nope, I sure didn't. Sorry. All right, there we go. I don't know if we're going to justify all of that salvage, but we at least justified some of it. Hmm. Spam calls the bait of my existence. Sorry, I was reading on something. Okay, that all went clean. Everyone's healthy. Now let's look. It looks like we really could have pulled off 23 salvage. Probably just take the... Uh, might take the LBX ammo. It sounds silly, but I think that's what we'll do. All we left was all we had left was LRM uh, and a jump jet. Ironically, those are jump jets that I need, but oh well. I'm going to do my housekeeping and we'll call it good for this session. Okay. So here it is, nice and simple. Just, uh, couple LRM racks and all of the uh, ammo. We do have some decent uh, missile hard points this time around though. So we're gonna try and do something about that. It's five and two. Yeah, so an LRM-15 weighs the same. What's a uh, LRM-20 weigh 10? These weigh seven. So an LRM-15 and an LRM-5 weigh less than an LRM-20, which we are going to exploit. This is probably why they give you so few LRM hard points, because you just fill them up with LRM-5s and it saves tonnage. 
see this is the uh, exact same amount of missiles but we saved two tons and you might think that that's silly but you don't know anything about military hardware if you think that's silly because two tons is a lot it's a big difference I might pull off even more just because the situation with our heat efficiency is so laughable. It's the equivalent of two LRM-15s. It's the same tonnage as well. can probably lose one rack of ammo. We're going to put on two medium lasers instead. There we go. Yeah, we might lose lose even more. Okay, whoops. I just tossed a bunch of LRM ammo and I probably didn't need to do that. Only the equivalent of one LRM-20 to uh, two racks is, is probably plenty. Might put a third one on there, but we really need to see how we are with our heat. Okay. Probably one more heat sink and we'll be in business. That's pretty decent. Yep, okay. So I hope you can see my thought process. Now you can definitely build mechs with thin armor and lots of LRMs and just keep them out of combat. Um, I like to play using my mechs as a form of area denial. And so if you keep your mechs far out of combat, you'd lose that advantage. As far as heat efficiency, I mean, these medium lasers and small lasers, again, will probably never fire in conjunction with the LRMs. So do we really need this much heat efficiency? Probably not, but um, I'm also probably not mistaken by doing it this way. Um, for LRM-5s, it's pretty anemic uh, LRM fire. So again, not terribly, terribly impressive to do it this way, but um, it's going to keep the mech in the fray, it's going to keep the damage up, and we can also um, uh, maintain our high mobility with our jump jets. So, and 
you see this sort of same block of stats, you're going to see it on basically any mech that I build. This sort of medium heat efficiency, medium firepower, medium movement, you know, stuff like that. And you might consider that kind of a generic and boring way to play this game. I definitely play MechWarrior 5 differently with a lot more specialization. Uh, so if you appreciate that kind of gameplay, you can see it in other places. Mark my words. But for right now, um, that kind of uh, wraps up this particular session and we'll do another one soon. Thanks for watching.